do you form qualitative utility functions? <clears throat> and when we talk about qualitative utility, what we're really getting at is like, is this good? Is this bad? Is this okay? Uh, and the idea is, is that you can use expert opinion, but what you do is you look at the different combinations and give it an assessment of how acceptable something is. So for example, price, uh, can be considered to be low, medium, and high. Maintenance can have three values, and therefore you have nine combinations. And so uh, you go through each combination uh, and figure out whether or not you need to assign a value for the attribute. And so actually, this is a, uh, the overall table for the attribute tree, but I think the example is actually better. For example, if I look at ABS, rates and size of vehicle and I look like at the combination so yeah big vehicles need ABS brakes on the other hand if it's a small vehicle maybe not uh, every vehicle needs ABS brakes so saying no uh, is it good bad or, or, or acceptable and you do the same thing again with the basic attributes such as price and maintenance and then look at the total costs and see uh, how it all works out, combining them together. And so here's another example here of total costs and safety. So you can go ahead and read through this. Uh, so if I look at the basic attributes for three different kinds of cars, now I can put this out on a spreadsheet and, and think about uh, which one of these uh, combinations uh, is acceptable based on uh, good or bad. And so there's a software called Dexy that you're going to uh, download. I uh, checked the link. It's still there. <laughs> uh, and so uh, what this allow you to do is you could go ahead and set it up and then you can set up your scale and then what you want to call uh, the rules for your utility function. And so here's an example of uh, decision rules that you're going to go by. Uh, that if the purchase cost of maintenance cost is high, it's still considered to be high. On the other hand, if the purchase price is low, but the maintenance costs are high, it's considered to be medium. And so these are the rules that you can set up. And you could just read through these and see what it is. And so based on the combination of attributes and the rules you've given it, it could tell you which car is the best and which car is the worst. Uh, and it plots it out in different ways that you can look at it. So uh, what you're trying to do is get the maximum utility. Now you could do this by Excel spreadsheet. And this starts getting into um, uh, the linear programming. And that's a whole different story for a uh, uh, whole different time when you're talking about part utility functions. And so, uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. I will give you some references regarding uh, Solver, which will optimize uh, what it is. But what you can do is do it strictly by, by algebra. This technique is called part utilities, that you define the function. And based on it, you can plot it out and see uh, where the trade-off is. Now, the thing... The other question is, how do you define utility? Isn't it arbitrary? Well, yeah, it could be. <laughs> but what it, it's not so much about being arbitrary, but consistent. Like if I consider $30,000 to be a good price, then the whole point is if $50,000 comes in, it's a bad price, or $20,000 is even a better price. But the point is, is that even though I quote unquote arbitrarily pick 30,000, there's a consistency for it. And that's what you want in a model. And so uh, your task for this week is going to be to play with the software. And I've written up an assignment to make it a bit clearer. What do I expect for this week?